This week, we're going to take a look at a brand new battery technology that promises to charge your tools in only a few seconds. Plus, we'll see a Sasquatch sent to a farm and finally learn the difference between Milwaukee Sawzalls. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. This episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool. Pro tools, pro service, all of the best prices at ohiopowertool.com. And Ego, power beyond belief. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. It's January 22nd, 2021, and we've got a lot to talk about on today's show. Now, before we get to that, if you're already a fan, do us a favor and hit that like button. Our first stop is back on Project Farm, where cordless shop vacs are being subjected to some seriously inhumane testing for our entertainment. Not too long ago, the thought of a competent cordless wet-dry vac was a thing of fairy tales. But thanks to new, bigger, and more powerful lithium-ion batteries and brushless motors, we have more options than ever. The brands tested include Rigid, Milwaukee, Bosch, Makita, DeWalt, Ryobi, and Hart. They all go through trials, including sucking up water and sand, and their airspeed and sound are tested too. As always, the tool reviews over at Project Farm are creative, thorough, and entirely unsponsored. So if you're looking to buy a cordless vac, it's definitely worth a watch. Now I happen to think that the all new Milwaukee M18 Fuel Sawzall is the best recip saw you can buy. But Vince over BCG disagrees. He thinks the Milwaukee M18 Fuel Sawzall is the best you can buy. Let me explain. In his typical enthusiastic presentation, Vince decided to tackle a common misconception about the new M18 Fuel Sawzall that started after its reveal in Pipeline Episode 3, when Milwaukee claimed that this new Sawzall is the fastest cutting ever. But as Vince so eloquently points out, it's not. For one, there are two different M18 Sawzalls. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but uh, you know, one of them's kind of super. And when you understand the roles they're meant to play, it all makes more sense. As Vince puts it, if you're a framer, one will be best for you. A plumber, maybe the other. An electrician, well. For electricians, I don't know. Like electricians, do they even use Sawzalls? Like don't they use like, I don't know, don't they use their Lyman pliers for everything? They use it as a hammer. They use it as a, probably a saw. They use it as, I mean, I don't, they don't even own recip saws. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. What are, I, maybe this would be the best for them as well. No matter what your trade is, Vince can help you pick the best Milwaukee M18 Sawzall over at VCG Construction. The world's first 10 and a quarter inch cordless worm drive saw has been out a couple months now. And unlike our garage queen over here. Hey, I've got plans for it. The example sent to our friends over at Pro Tool Reviews has been just about worked to death. Now, including a trip to the farm. Specifically, the PTR crew sent their saw to a farm in Georgia where it was tasked with replacing a corded version, often used to top off fence posts in one pass, which is an amazing thing to do with a handheld circular saw. As we've mentioned before, this saw is huge, powerful, and consequently heavy at 19.3 pounds with a battery. But as Kenny points out, the farmhands didn't seem to mind the extra weight because it meant they could leave the generator back in the barn. Not everyone needs 10 and a quarter inches on their saw. I do. But apparently if you're topping fence posts on a farm or hosting a tool video, Thank you. you do. For the full story, head over to Pro Tool Reviews on YouTube. All right, it's time for a tool talk, guys. Last week, we dove into the Ox coffee box, talked about why it disappeared, and asked you guys who should step up and fill that space. In the comments, there was a strong call for a Milwaukee coffee maker. Caleb Busher said, quote, I don't even like coffee, but I'd buy a Milwaukee coffee maker. Alan Smith said, I brew a pot of coffee before I leave the house and put it in my Stanley thermos. If you preheat your thermos, then your coffee will stay burning hot for 12 hours easy. <laughs> Looks like we found someone who can function on only a thermos of coffee every day. Rookie. Now this week, we're turning to battery tech as an Israeli startup called Stordot announced the first production versions of their super fast charging lithium ion batteries. Their new battery tech is based on the replacement of graphite in a battery's anode with something called metalloid nanoparticles. The results are lithium ion batteries that can be safely charged at much higher speeds. Their goal is to fully charge an electric vehicle in only five minutes, something that takes an hour on current EVs. This technology is still in its infancy with a company aiming to land in actual cars in 2025. To learn more, we're joined by a small panel of battery experts from Ego. This is Joe Turoff, the Chief Marketing Officer, Tim Baker, the Director of Product Management, and Brady Growth, Director of Engineering. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. 
Thank you for having us. All right, Brady, I want to start with you as I try to understand this news. When I read it, they're telling me that they're replacing the graphite in the cells anodes with metalloid nanoparticles. Could you help all of us understand a little better about just how these batteries are built and what this technology does? So when we look at uh, the way that lithium works now, we, we have your cylindrical cells, your 18650s, your 21700s, and if you picture sort of like a long strip of these layered material, you know, on one, one side you have the anode and on another side you have the cathode, and in between you have this, this sort of lithium electrolyte, right? That's sort of all just one sheet that's rolled up into this cylindrical shape. Um, so one of the challenges that we have is when you charge really fast or you discharge really, really fast, I mean, a couple things. First of all, it really sort of makes those, those anodes and cathodes dirty. And that dirtiness is what prohibits that charge from resting on the anode and the cathode. And that's where you see that battery degradation over cycles and things like that. But it also, fast charging and fast discharging is also a safety issue. We, uh, we see high heats and things like that. So, so those two problems are what I think this company is trying to overcome with, with their technology. And the way they're doing it is they're making that anode more efficient. And it, it's a little bit smoke and mirrors at this point or unclear, but it looks like they're using a very thin coating on the anode to enable that high efficiency as well as sort of eliminating or, or reducing that dirtiness that the anode sees. All right, I feel like I'm understanding the technology a little more. Tim, let me turn to you. So will this specific technology that they're advertising is gonna charge a car in five minutes, is this actually gonna translate into power tools? I mean, uh, the new Ego Z6, you know, zero turn riding lawnmower, am I gonna be able to grab that, take it in my garage and charge it in 30 seconds? Yeah, let me start by, by just giving a little bit of math. So if you take the, so take the Z6 as an example, it comes with four 10 amp hour, 56 volt batteries. That's 56 watt hours of energy that are in those batteries. So if you think about it, you know, what would it take to charge those batteries in an hour? Well, it would take 560 watts. It's, um, you know, it's pretty simple math to get there. That's assuming perfect efficiency, of course, out of the charger. Um, if I wanted to charge that same, just one of those batteries in five minutes, do the math, it's 6,720 watts of charge power, which equates to roughly a 60 amp circuit at 120 volts. So you're talking about an infrastructure from a power standpoint that we don't quite have yet. Now, when we get to the point where, you know, everybody's got level two EV chargers in their garage, then we could do some pretty interesting things. With that charger, assuming about 70% efficiency, which is typically what we see out of power tool chargers or OPE chargers, you're looking at about seven minutes to charge one 10 amp hour battery. So I think what this technology brings is the ability to leverage potentially EV charging to revolutionize something like commercial OPE or for power tools, revolutionize where uh, gas powered power tools or generators are being used today. So still really cool stuff, I think, in those applications. All right, that's a lot to process. Joe, let me ask you for a larger view of this whole thing. If these batteries get here, are they going to change the power tool industry? Well, I think that's a great question. And I think the answer is it depends. Um, this is not the first time we've heard of a manufacturer or an individual that had a great new technology. Um, and it won't be the last. Uh, if it is, there's no doubt that consumers will be drawn to it. Uh, what I can tell you is that whether it's outdoor power equipment or power tools, what consumers want is magic. They want these tools to run as long as they need them to run, and they want these tools to recharge just like that. So if this is a solution for charging, there's no doubt that it's viable for the market. Awesome. Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. We appreciate your insight. Thanks for having us. For today's Tool Talk, I want you to imagine these new cells in your power tools. Think about how this could affect your workflow on the job site. Just think, if you could drop a drill on a mobile charging pad for only 30 seconds and top off its battery, would we even need separate batteries anymore? It would be faster to just set it on a charger for a moment versus going and looking for a full battery and swapping them out. Or maybe quick charging would mean we only need tiny one amp hour batteries on all of our tools, making them lighter and easier to use. Let me know in the comments what you think. If a battery can charge that fast, how could that change cordless power tools? I'll be responding to your questions and ideas after the show. Enough tool talk, it's time for some actual work with Rob Robillard.
Hey guys, how are you this week? We're doing great, Rob. How are you this week? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. For this week's tip, I want to talk about working around sinks and drains. I can't tell you how many times I've seen contractors, you know, installing knobs or hinges in cabinets or even just working on a little hinge like this and they drop their screw and it goes down the drain. So this, the tip is to just make sure you close the drain. So if you do drop a screw, it doesn't go down the drain and you don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. Simple tip, I've seen it a thousand times, but it's worth mentioning. I hope this helps. Have a great week, thanks. Thank you, Rob. Now last week we talked about the death of Ox Coffee and who we thought would be its successor, which you can watch right here. Special thanks to Ego and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you next week.